Hello YouTubers, this is Shady Dave here. I'm going to discuss how to build a wireless buzzer system for a trivia game using wireless keyboards and a simple button. So essentially what I'm using is the uh, easy button, the uh, Staples easy button. It's well, pretty inexpensive, about five bucks, and you can use these things for pretty much anything. I mean, it's, uh, I was doing projects earlier where I turn it into like a little recording device when you slap it, and instead of saying, that was easy, it says, you know, something really inappropriate to your coworkers, which is pretty cool. Yeah, we won't get into that. Anyway, so, what we're going to do first is remove the batteries, because I don't want this going off every time I touch the stupid top. That was easy. The screw holes are actually under the feet. You just peel these off. This circuit board has one button on the top, and uh, here's your little chipset that says, that was easy. Well, you can actually remove it. Well, you don't have to remove it, but uh, just take it out of the circuit by removing this uh, resistor here. And uh, when you wire it up, you're going to be wiring up this resistor and this empty little junction point. I don't really know if you can see that. This guy right here. Uh, he doesn't have any solder on him yet, but if you just put a little bit of flux on it and, you know, heat it up, solder sticks to it, no problem. And, you know, then you have your little uh, custom button switch. Since it's only going to be pressing one button on the keyboard, that's pretty cool. It seems to be made for it. Let's remove the inside. No, you don't have to keep anything. All the wires are good to go. The speaker wires on the board are good to go. You don't even need these wires on the circuit board. These uh, these guys right here. Since you're, you're going to be wiring up the chip yourself, take everything off. These little guys here, they look like batteries, but they're not. They're actually uh, steel weights. Not lead weights. I thought they were made out of lead, but turns out they're steel. So you can use them for... Uh, magnet projects later if you want to, but uh, for now just just pop them out. They're hot glued into place. You can remove all the hot glue and stuff as well because it gets in the way when you put the other. Remove this resistor and flux and solder this little point here. The quintessential jar of flux. This brush is probably way too big for it, but eh, whatever it works. Just a little dab. That's all it takes. Perfect little solder bead. Little tiny solder bead, and remove the resistor. Cool. Alrighty, so we can put this aside because now it's time to take apart one of the keyboards. We're going to take this keyboard, take it apart, take out the electronics, throw it into, well, this button. So what we're going to do is, doo -doo -doo, I've already removed all the screws. We're going to pop it open. Now, the great thing about this particular brand of keyboard, from all the others I've seen, this Logitech Wireless K250, is all of the keys are actually contained in this top part. So when you pull the top part off, the keys stay there. They don't go everywhere. That's awesome. Look at that. What a good, like, well, design for hacking, anyway. So uh, you're not worried about losing all the keys or having to go over and make a big mess. So we'll just put that down there. And when you take everything off, you are presented with a little tiny circuit board that's sort of pinned to a larger circuit board like this. I've already removed the screws on this little guy. I got ahead of myself. And that's what it looks like. Now, this is your key bed. Um, it's basically little tiny push button switches. It's, you know, they're separated by like one tiny 
single flimsy bit of plastic sheeting, and uh, that's enough to make them click uh, with just the press of a big floppy silicone button pad, which is, you didn't see this, but it was on there. It's like a squid pelt. Okay, so what we do is we take this little circuit board off. We remove this big flimsy sheet. We're going to save that for later. Believe me, we really need that. And discard the bottom keyboard tray. This is what we're left with. This little tiny circuit board. Now, if I wanted to actually build this game commercially, first of all, um, if you look on the back of this little keyboard circuit board, there's a bunch of information there. I can probably use these uh, serial numbers and codes to track down which manufacturer uh, makes this uh, little keyboard circuit board because a lot of uh, a lot of them they just make them in bulk and then uh, you know your individual low tech keyboard company comes along and says hey I've got a case that I want to put it in and they sell them the circuit boards they brand the circuit boards with the uh, with the Logitech thing but you can see this little Logitech logo has been added after all the other screen printing has been done which leads me to believe that this little circuit board is probably in other brands as well stands to reason so if I could get just the circuit boards I may be able to save a lot of money especially if I want to do some mass production on these things uh, per buzzer because right now it costs like 30 bucks per buzzer and who wants that uh, so anyway now that this thing is out um, we have to figure out which two of these little pins to uh... you have all these little pins on the bottom there and what we want to do is we want to bridge two of them and that will give you your number press or your or your key press right so we have to refer back to this big floppy piece of cellulose separate it out like that okay, and uh figure out which one of these little dots is actually associated with uh, the number that you want to press. Luckily, I've already done this. So this is the, uh, this is the bottom sheet. And I've traced it back. It goes Tilled one two three four. The button row on top is the uh, uh, the function buttons for the keyboard. So the row down is the number buttons. Tilled one two three four five six seven eight nine. So I'm only interested in doing five buzzers today. So I'm only going to map out five. And luckily, on this sheet anyway, four and five share a connection. If you see there, four and then that's five and they share. A little connection so I can actually just trace it back and whatever and essentially you just you follow it it's like doing a grade 2 map you know it's or not a map uh, a maze right like one of those things you, you get on the in grade school and you just take your marker and just figure out where it, which pin it leads to right over here these pins and you do the same on the other one to get the second key press I've done that as well, and essentially, what you end up with is a map to solder your little key pins right there. They're the ones that are kind of highlighted because I put solder on them. Pretty cool. The leads that I soldered onto, or that circuit board that I uh, I took out of the easy button earlier. This guy. This is the easy button circuit board, single button. And what I did was, I put a little blob of solder here. This was an empty sort of solder node, I don't even know what it's for. And I removed the resistor and I put my second lead connected to this side. It's important to note, because I don't think this one would do anything, because it's not really hooked up to the switch. But this side is hooked up to the switch, so that's what we got. And we have this neat little, these leads. Essentially I just soldered the two leads that are coming out of this circuit board and I put them onto the two pins that I marked earlier based on this circuit sheet. Frigo. Ah, okay. So now 
we can assemble this puppy.